The following is a video showing you how to shampoo a patient's hair while in the bed. So I'm going to take you through that process, showing you the supplies that you need to do that, and uh, taking you just through that process. And again, this is for shampooing residents while they're in the bed. So the first thing I would do is obviously knock on the door. Come in. Uh, good morning, Mr. Wayne Scott. This is Mr. Wayne Scott. He's um, agreed to be our um, patient for the day, so we will be um, actually shampooing his hair. Um, so I would identify the patient, um, look, check his ID bracelet to verify that this is who I need it to be, and then I would explain the procedure. This morning we're going to shampoo your hair. The doctor has said you can't get out of bed, and it's been a little while since you've had your hair shampooed. Mm -hmm. And so I know that makes everybody feel better, you know, when their hair feels good. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get that done this morning. Okay. Then I would gather my supplies, which you have here. Um, and I'm going to go practice my hand hygiene and then get my um, self set up for the procedure. going to go ahead and take your pillows, Mr. Wayne Scott, so we don't get those wet. And I'm going to sit them aside. I'm, the key here is to save your bed as much as you possibly can, so this waterproof pad will help with that. This is a shampoo tray. They come in uh, lots of varieties. There's the inflatable type that you can use. This is um, an old fashioned type of, of shampoo tray, but it still works um, the same. Um, very nice to use when you cannot get your patient out of bed um, to wash their hair. So you simply just lay that there. I'm actually gonna put a little bit of a towel right here just to save side of our mattress. If the towel gets wet, that's fine. It doesn't matter because your water is going to go directly down into just your traditional little trash can here, taking the liner out of it because you're going to be dumping that water later. Okay? All right. Now I'm going to go get my water. It will be 105 degrees, ideally, um, for this process. So I'm going to go get that, Mr. Wayne Scott, and I will be right back. Okay. Perfect. Now this process of shampooing in the bed, it's not a neat process. There will be a little bit of a of mess involved. You try to contain that as much as you possibly can, but again, your focus here is your patient's comfort. Um, when, it, when somebody feels like they look good, it makes them feel good, and nothing is more therapeutic than a nice warm bath or having somebody wash your hair for you when you're not able to do so. Now, Mr. Wayne Scott, I'm going to take your blankets here just so we don't get them wet. All right. I won't take them all the way down. Here's a washcloth for you to hold if you need to do so. I'm going to put this washcloth or bath towel over you. Okay. Now, I'm going to raise your bed. For a comfortable working level. Ideally, you would not want to work over your side rail, um, but because of the way our bed is designed, that is not the case in here, but just note that ideally you would not want to work over your side rail. Um, and your side rail should be raised while your bed is in motion, and you would put the rail down on the side that you're working on. Um, so are you ready? I'm ready. Shampoo here. 
Now, Mr. Wainscott, do you use conditioner? Yeah. Okay. One thing you want to do if you have a patient that's got longer hair, you may want to go ahead and brush to get any tats out um, before you go to washing because it will make the process a lot easier um, afterwards. But Mr. Wainscott here has very nice hair, and so um, he has no um, tats or anything of that nature in his hair. So he's in good shape. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. Do you want to hold that over your face just in case, or are you good? Um, here. Yeah, How's that? That makes me feel better. Okay. Now we're just going to pour and get the hair wet. Trying not to get it into his ears, if at all possible. And ideally, it's nice to have a helper available sometimes, if that's at all possible but if you're at home taking care of an individual and this is the way that you're doing it then you you know the more you practice the better you get um, at these type of skills practice makes perfect again. It's always nice to have extra towels. If you're a messy person like me, I know myself. How you doing, Mr. Wayne Scott? Pretty good. Doing good? Okay, looks like we've gotten everything pretty wet. So now we will just go ahead and start with our shampoo. Working up a good lather. And the sound you're hearing there is the water that's being um, flowing from our shampoo tray here into our trash receptacle that's catching the water for us so it's not going on the floor. And some of your patients may like a nice scrubbing. Um, a lot of people do. But just remember, um, if your patients should have open sores or things of that nature on their scalp, you do want to utilize your gloves. Okay. Now, we've got our hair washed. Now, Mr. Wainscott, if you will lift your head up just slightly, I'm going to try and drain it. to rinse. You okay? Yep. It's not impeding your breathing at all, is it? No. Okay. Always tell your patient what you're doing. Nobody likes surprises. So as you're pouring the water, make sure you're telling them, okay, the water's coming on your head now. You don't want to frighten them if you can avoid doing so. You can use any type of water pitcher or anything of that nature to pour the water onto your patient's hair. This water here that collects in your tray is nice to help you get the soap out of the back of their hair. walk around to the other side just to see if I got all the soap on that side. And it looks like I did. I feel like I did. Yeah. Alright, I think we can take this off. I was about to take a nap. Set that aside. Isn't that relaxing? Mm -hmm. If you'll just raise your head up slightly for me. Okay, and this is why we have our waterproof pad here. Thank you. 
just a second. Now you can take your rail down. And at this point you just massage their hair, drying it the best that you can. How's that feel? Pretty good. other tail. Okay, if you'll lift your head up for me, I'll get this out of your way. Okay, now you can lay your head back down so you don't get your sheets wet. Get rid of And at this time, if your patient wanted their hair blow dried, you could do that. Mr. Wayne Scott has voice that he does not want his hair blow dried. So this is simply a, a nice towel drying that you would do at this point. Take your brush, brush out their hair. Supporting their neck. Making sure you get the back of their hair as well. Then at this point, I would clean up my supplies, discard my soiled linen into my dirty linen container, clean up my basin, put my supplies back where I found them, um, make sure I leave Mr. Wayne Scott with his call lights, ask him if there's anything else that I could do for him, and then that would be the end of the shampooing of the patient's hair while in bed.